It's not over. Stop the fight! No! People! Everybody, everybody, I come here for everybody! Kill everybody! I'm the champ! I'm the king! Kill everyone! All right, guys, welcome back to Broke Bets. Um, just came off another winning week for the previous card, Sanhagen versus Vera. What's going on, Carson? Oh, uh, what's going on, my dude? Yeah, another winning week and uh, looking to keep this going here into this pay-per-view. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, uh, not a huge profitable week. We'll go over that card at the end of this video for uh, how our bets turned out. But uh, if you guys want to start off, drop a like. Um and uh, let's get this video going. So first fight, we got Trey Ogden versus Ignacio Bahamondes. Um, Trey Ogden just had his fight canceled um, last or was it two weeks ago? No, it was last week. I'm stupid. And then Bahamondes got his one canceled this week, so this is a strapped matchup. Um, gonna have to pick Bahamondes. Um, I haven't seen the odds for this fight. I would imagine uh, Bahamondes will be a favorite, but. Um, this is going to be a closer fight than I think the Tapology community predicts. Uh, I see 92% of people are going for Baja Mundes, but um, Trey Ogden's got pretty a pretty good skill set, and uh, Baja Mundes is a pretty young kid. Um, but I do think that he's going to be able to outstrike uh, Trey Ogden to a decision. What do you think here? Yeah, I mean, uh, he's only 25 years old, and he's had three or four fights in the UFC. Um, I like his uh, left hand. He throws a nice straight with it, and he switches stances. Um, I think uh, Ogden might be able to uh, neutralize him. I think uh, Ogden did a good job against Zell Huber, who had longer reach and, and right. that stuff, uh, which Baja Mendes, I'm assuming, does in this matchup. Um, but, yeah, I think uh, Baja Mendes wins a decision here. Yeah, I, I mean, that's the scare with Trey Ogden. He just fought another tall opponent um, and just completely outstruck the guy. And that's a little bit different because I think Baja Mendes has got better kicks um, and and uh, better combos than uh, Daniel Zell Huber. But, um, you know, Ogden's got a good role in his punches, and I think he's going to have a grappling advantage here. Baja Mendes won't really take him down, but there's a chance that Ogden will hit a takedown on him. He's got a good blast double. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think Ogden would have to be worried about uh, that guillotine that oh, yeah. Mundus has. Um, that was pretty nice in his last fight. He showed that and uh, got out of some bad uh, positions with him. Yeah, and he's tall, which makes him hard to take down on the fence. So if he's on the fence, he can usually do pretty well. Um, I will say uh, Bahamundas seemed pretty prone to the jab at times when he fought John McDessey, um, a loss split decision lost uh, a while ago, but again, this guy's 25 years old, younger, getting better every fight. What I really like about him is he really wants it. You watch every one of his fights, man. This dude fucking wants it, and that's the Roosevelt Roberts knockout. He's just putting on clinic till the end of the fight. Um, I really like his body work. Uh, he mixes up to the body pretty well, kicks and punches, especially when people have a high guard. And, yeah, just great all, all round. But, yeah, I really like the over two and a half for this fight. I think that this one uh, makes it that far. And, uh, yeah. But, yeah, Bob Mendez by decision. For the next fight, we have Chris Barnett versus Chase Sherman. You know this channel. I think we have a rule here. We can't cr pick against Chris Barnett, even if he's p facing John Jones, Stipe. I don't, think, I don't think we can pick against this guy. Um, yeah, beast boy for the win here. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I just think that, you know, Chase Sherman, obviously horrible record in the UFC. He's like 4-12 and 12 or some shit like that. And Barnett, he's not technically amazing. He got his ass beat up in the Jake Collier fight up until when Collier was uh, gassed, and then he got on his case. Um, but, uh, you know, he, Barnett always surprises me that he can, like, weather the storm and come back and find a knockout. And I think he's going to find a knockout somehow in round two. I mean, what, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Chase Sherman can guess himself out. And Barnett, uh, if he's able to to get on top of him, Sherman won't be able to uh, get back up and maybe find a TKO finish there. Yeah, and yeah, the Jake Collier fight is where Jake tried to attempt a trip and then Jake fell right on his... Uh, stomach and then Chris just laid on him and then started uh, 
batter him. So, um, questionable fight, you know, I I wouldn't bet on either of these guys. If I did, I might, like, sprinkle a bet on Chris Barnett knockout round two or three. Yeah, so, I mean, Chase Sherman should never be a minus 225 favorite or whatever he is right now. Right. And it's understandable. But, yeah, if even if uh, I don't think Chris Barnett has any good takedowns, but there's a chance that Chase slips, Barnett gets on top of him, and then it's over. Who knows? So, uh, yeah, Chris Barnett by knockout in round two. Okay, for the next fight, we have Sam Hughes versus Jacqueline Amarim. Uh, I like Jacqueline in this fight, um, though there's a lot of questions. You know, this girl hasn't been outside of the first round and is just decimating a lot of girls who, like, can't grapple. Um, a bit of a red flag, but uh, I do think that she still finds a submission in this fight. I'm just going to delay it by a round. Um she seems to have pretty good takedowns and extremely good top control. She can get into the mount pretty easily, and the submissions are slick from there. Um, I also thought about with this fight, um, Jacqueline Amarim, she knows uh, Estella Nunez, who's a former opponent of Sam Hughes. Um, and I think that could pay dividends that somebody she trains with knows, could maybe give her some advice on how to fight this girl. Um there's a lot of questions, though, with this fight. Again, a girl not getting out of the first round. Sam Hughes kind of is just, like, a girl who, you know, doesn't really have a good, good skill set, but is just, like, tough and eats the punches and can t- get a girl down to the ground and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I don't... I, it's hard to say. I think that Amarim uh, takes this one by sub. What do you think? Yeah, most likely, I think... Uh, it'd be interested to see uh, if it did get out of the first round. I mean... All of her finishes are first round, and most of them are within a minute. So, right. Um, um, good to see how that cardio will hold up. And in terms of betting on this fight, I don't like a single spot to be honest. Like, can't bet the under or over in my opinion because you really don't know how great Amarim's skills might translate to the UFC. Um, and I don't really like even her money line because I haven't seen her striking completely tested. You know, she does have, like, a quick knockout in, like, 10 seconds. I think it was over this girl. Um, But at the same time, the threat of the takedown, things like that can really change things. So, yeah. Amarin, submission, round two. Okay, for the next fight, we have Gerald Mearshart versus Joe Pfeiffer. Um, Picking Joe Pfeiffer, I'm not convinced about the hype. You know, um, I think Dana White's, you know, speech will just kind of raise that hype for him, whereas if he was on any other, uh, you know, contender series card, he probably wouldn't get the recognition that he gets right now. Um, but that being said, I still think that he's going to find a knockout on Gerald Mearshart. Um, I'm going I'm to say second round. I think this one's going to play out for a minute. Um, I just think that Gerald Mearshart, I haven't held a super high opinion of this guy since he's been in the UFC for how many fights he's had. You know, he's a really slow guy. I almost like to call him the sloth because of the way he moves. But uh he gets he gets wins, man, somehow and and proves me wrong almost every time I pick against him. But um he he uh has very well improved head movement from what I've seen. You watch that Bruno Silva fight and uh, Gerald Mearshart actually started moving his head, but then at the same time, Bruno Silva was an idiot that fight. I mean, what do you think? I mean, yeah, I mean, Bruno Silva looked god-awful, but is that due to uh, Mearshart um, having a takedown threat or just him? I mean, I think it's probably a mixture of both. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if Mearshart can get out of the first round... um, I think he could find a sub, to be honest, but uh, I do like Joe Pfeiffer. I, yeah, I think Pfeiffer's uh, fighting style is just a little bit better than maybe some previous opponents Gerald's been around. Like Bruno Silva didn't throw like a single straight punch the entire fight. Everything was looping. Right. Everything was missing. He gassed real bad. Um, Pfeiffer on the he other like hand, tried too hard to knock him out. Right. Pfeiffer on the other hand, I know the the fucking juiced record a little bit with. Uh, you know, Alan Amadoski, if you're going to base the, your prediction for this fight off of that one, you know, probably not the best idea. But I think Pfeiffer does have a good jab, and that could pay dividends, especially against Mearshart. Um, 
something that always surpri- that surprised me with uh, Pfeiffer is, you know, his right hand actually isn't that great of a tool for him. He doesn't have a really good straight um, or anything going with hooks with his right hand, but his left hand is money. He's got a great jab, he's got a great left hook, and he's got good body work. Um, and I think all that adds up. At the same time, this guy looks like Justin Gagey and Bo Nickel combined. You gotta put that in the uh, to account. But uh, GM3 seems to always get things done. He'll have the ground advantage. Everybody knows that. Yeah, if GM3 wins, it's you got to imagine by sub. Right, and um, yeah, on the feet, this to be close. I don't, I don't particularly like a bet on this fight. I could totally understand if people are going for the underdog. I've just never been able to support uh, Mearshark's lack of head movement. Uh, was getting better, but lack of it when straight punches are coming his way and the damage he can take in a fight. So, Joe Pfeiffer, KO, round two. Okay, for the next fight, we have Kelvin Gastelum versus Chris Curtis. I'm taking Kelvin Gastelum. Um, mainly, I know he's on a layoff, but this guy, he's faced so many of the high-level strikers in the middleweight division that I think that Chris Curtis is a... I wouldn't, I won't say a complete step down because he's a different style, but it definitely is a step down from people like, you know, Adesanya, Whitaker, um, Hermanson, or uh, Cannoneer, not Hermanson. Um, but I think that he's just faced some more experienced strikers. And, you know, I like Chris Curtis a lot. Um, hilarious guy, but uh, I just think that the countering game, just uh, how he saw Cheeto lose his fight, you know, waiting the entire fight. If Chris does that here, it's me pretty hard because Kelvin's got a good chin. So I like Kelvin by decision. Yeah, uh, you nailed it. I think he'll just uh, be more active in and out. Gaslam, that is. Um, neither man has been knocked out before, so um, I do like that for advantage, Gaslam. Because if Curtis wins, um, usually it's the power punches for him. Right. Um, Gaslam, I think he'll just be more active and win a decision here. I, I like a split decision on this fight, to be honest. I think it's going to be really hard to score because Gaslam hasn't had a knockout for a while or like a incredibly impressive performance, and his fights have been, you know, left up in the hanging at times. Um, I personally don't like betting much on this fight, maybe than over the two over two and a half rounds. Um, obviously, Kelvin's good chin. You know, but it's always a concern with me is like Chris Curtis trains at a really good gym, got good teammates at his weight class. You know, we spar in Sean Strickland on a daily basis. Um, and Kelvin Gastelum's gym just, I don't think, possesses a lot of that same uh, same quality there. But Gastelum's just got good footwork, man. He's going to be in and out of range. You know, you saw Buckley really piecing up Curtis up until the knockout. And, you know, that was his game plan going in. But I think that Kelvin's going to be a little bit more aware of the strikes coming his way. So, um, yeah, again, I think it wins a uh, close split decision. And I think once that prop gets out, I might put a little, you know, like a point one unit sprinkle on that because I do think that it's a pretty good chance this one goes to a split decision when you can't really uh, tell who's getting the better of each other on the stand-up at times. But, right, uh, especially if, if Curtis is landing the more pow- powerful strikes and Gaslam's landing more volume. I mean, that's what I anticipate. How are they going to yeah. score that? And the odds indicate that it's a, a pick and fight too. So, and and uh, you also seen from Chris Curtis is he uses the high guard all the time to block punches, and that'll leave him open to the body. You know, Buckley was touching up to the body, and not that I don't think this fight plays out on the ground at all. But if Kelvin wants to, um, you know, shoot a takedown when Chris, uh has his hands up high, he can make him think about the takedown during the fight, and it could lead to him getting the better of the striking. So, I think it's another way that uh, Kelvin could get the better of him. But yeah, Gastelum by decision. Okay, for the next fight, we have Steve Garcia versus Shailen Nerdenbecki. Um, Nerdenbecki coming off of uh, the fixed fight, everyone knows. Uh, picking him. Uh... I just think Steve Garcia's chin won't hold up here. You know, he he just beat uh, Chase Hooper, who's very hittable, not very good on the feet, we all know. I think that uh, Nerd and Becky 
with the early power in round one, could knock out Steve Garcia. I think he's just had a very suspect chin. And him at this weight class, he's looking a little thin. And uh, Charlie Ontiveros hurt this guy at his chin twice in their fight. And Charlie Ontiveros, uh, not very good. Uh, what do you think? Uh, yeah, you're you're right on. I think uh, Garcia might have some hype uh, beating up Chase Hooper, but uh, Nerland Becky's got uh, 20 times, 100 times better striking than Chase Hooper's. So, I mean, I'm not really taking that into account. I think uh, Nerland Becky um, will find an early KO here. Right. I, I, I don't even know. <laughs> like, Chase Hooper's is so bad. I know Nerland Becky's isn't even great. Like, his... He has good natural power just for his strength, but, like, you know, he, I think he'll have this wrestling advantage, and even if this gets to the ground, there's a chance that he could just ground and pound him. Uh, but, yeah, with the suspect chin, Steve Garcia, I think he's kind of slow. He kind of walks. He, like, rushes into strikes, too. If you... The, you you know, that's Mashat, Mashate KO. Literally just, like, sprinted into his punches and got knocked out. Same thing with Antvero stuff, so... Yeah. Shylan Nerdenbecki KO round one. Okay, for the next fight, we have Michelle Waterson. I'm just going to call her that. I don't like calling her Gomez. Who fucking cares? Versus Luana Pinheiro. Picking Luana here. Um, but, I mean, Michelle Waterson shows up to fight every time. But something I don't really like about her game is I think she drops rounds pretty easily, especially early on. And uh, Luana Pinheiro... This girl's got, like, a wicked judo throw where she just gets you in the headlock, turns her hips over, and you're fucking flat down. Um, Overall striking doesn't have a lot of volume, but I think that she'll have a power advantage, and uh, she'll win this fight by decision. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, uh, tough fight to call. I think uh, Watterson at 37 years old uh, could be at the tail end of her career here. I just think... uh, the young up and comer, younger up and comer fighter will will find it, the victory here. Yeah, I mean um, Michelle Waterson faced. I mean, obviously her record doesn't look great, but she's faced a lot of really good fighters. She's got you know that background of wrestling that uh, I think could actually defend a lot of the judo throws from uh, Waters or from Pinero. But um, yeah, I mean her kicks. You know, she always loves doing kicks but she really doesn't land many um she loves throwing like that front kick that just goes straight up and does nothing it's kind of confusing overall i just think she's kind of hittable and uh pinero she's not gonna have a lot of volume but if she touches her it's gonna be i think do a little bit more and uh this be another close decision in my eyes i i don't trust really any of those girls i don't really know pinero's got a weird Weird game, too. Like, when she fought Randa Marcos, she got a win from the Alita up kick and totally pulled the Aljo Oscar worthy performance in order to get the dub. But she was already winning that fight. She definitely could have kept fighting it. It was weird. But yeah, uh, Luana Pinero by decision. Okay, for the next fight, we have Cynthia Calvillo versus Lupita Godinez. Picking Lupi. I just, I don't think Cynthia Calvillo is that great of a fighter. You know, she got pushed to the top of the division for a win over, like, Jessica I and some other people, and then, you know, you lose, you lose, you lose, and you lose, and you quit on the stool versus Andrea Lee. Never a good sign. Um, and Lupita Gondinez, I don't know, she, questionable. You know, fight IQ, you, everyone thinks about that Angela Hill. I know you have thoughts about it. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, she had a clear path to victory to get a takedown, win it on the ground, and she didn't even attempt a takedown. So, um, I don't know uh, what that game plan was going into that fight, but it obviously did not work. I do think she can be better in and out of range of the striking in this fight. Um, I think that Ariane Carnelosi fight blew her up a little bit more than she should have been because I think Carnelosi's ground game was much worse than people anticipated, and uh, Lupita just made her look like trash on the ground. But this is gonna be a questionable fight. Um, I still like Godinez, obviously no bet. Really don't like bets for a lot of these fights, but uh, yeah, Lupita Godinez by decision. 
Okay, for the next fight, we have Kevin Holland versus Santiago Ponzinibbio. Picking Kevin Holland, but I'll tell you what, this is going to be an entertaining ass fight, but if, if you trust Kevin Holland with all your heart, that's going to be I think, a tough thing to follow up with. I mean, Kevin Holland's he's gotten better, and I think he actually looks, you know, 10 times better at this weight class, but, uh, you know, makes a lot of mistakes still in his striking for his frame and things like that. Uh, Ponzi will make this competitive if he, if Kevin wants to fight in the pocket and, you know, Kevin showed an amazing chin versus, uh, Wonderboy. And I don't think Santiago will knock him out either, but I think we're just going to be, we're going to see a drooling decision here. Yeah, I think so too. I think, uh, Holland's got to take advantage of that eight inch, uh, reach advantage and three inches of height. Uh -uh. He normally, I mean, kind of does, but. Not really. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really see Holland knocking him out either. I think uh, Ponzinibbio's only been knocked out twice. Once by Jin Liang, and then a long time ago in 2015. So that doesn't really matter. Um, I do do think it'll be a lot closer than, than the odds indicate as well. I think uh, they'll be going back and forth on the feed here. I wouldn't expect Ponzi to hold him on the ground with wrestling either, but who knows? You know, that could always be something that happens. But, uh, I don't know, Kevin Holland, you know, this guy's been in close fights with someone like Darren Stewart, and Darren Stewart really was never that good. Um, and, like I said, like you said, 81-inch reach, but he uses it like a 70-inch reach is the sad part, and... Um, doesn't really have an established jab because he likes to use his right hand more than anything. And Santiago, you know, I think he's been developing the lead kick even better as fights go on, and I think he could use a lead kick here against a wide stance Kevin Holland as well. Um, it may leave him prone to get encountered, but at the same time, uh, I think Ponzinibbio is pretty good in 50-50 exchanges as well. And, um, you know, I thought he won the Pereira fight very close, could have gone either way. But uh, this would be an interesting fight. Probably fight of the night. So, anything else you got? No, looking forward to it. Holland by decision. Okay, for the next fight, we have Raul Rosas Jr. versus Christian Rodriguez. Picking Raul Rosas Jr. again, uh, not uh, with caution. I've been saying it for every single fight, but... Um, you know, I always think about with this guy. Uh, you know, he's looked good. But he's a little bit untested in the striking. Um, and Jay Perrin, I know that fight took place for a minute and a half or whatever it took place for. Jay Perrin was kind of hitting him pretty well on the feet. And if this fight does stay on the feet, I'd have to favor Christian Rodriguez, which I wouldn't be super... I wasn't super impressed with the striking, but it definitely is more damaging. Um, what do you yeah, think? Yeah, he was, he was cracking uh, Jonathan Pierce in that fight. I mean, I thought uh, Rodriguez... Uh, Looked pretty darn good in that fight. Um, he was working, um, stopping those takedowns, trying to. And then when they were on the feet, I think he was getting the better of them on the feet. Um, he showed a lot of heart in that fight, too, which uh, you like to see. And he's he's really young, too. I mean, 25, but obviously Rosas is younger. Um, I'm really looking forward to this fight. I think uh, it'll be really competitive but I do see Rosas edging it out. Yeah, I think uh, the main part, I don't think there's going to be a lot of damage in this fight. I think this one's going straight to a decision. Even with submission attempts, Christian Rodriguez, I think if anyone's going to submit someone, I actually think Christian Rodriguez would catch Rosas in a guillotine or something, because um, a lot of people don't know, but I think Rodriguez has actually got pretty good submission skills. Um, he almost subbed Pierce with a guillotine himself, and like edge of edge of Pierce's life submission as well. He barely escaped it. Um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, Cruz in that fight, Dominic Cruz commentating, said, oh, it's over, it's over. Yep. Like, ten times. Yep. And, uh, you know, I really think Rodriguez has got really good scramble ability too. Like, when he gets stuck on his back, it can be a little bit tougher, but he scrambled really well in that fight to get up at times and take over positions. Like, Pierce took over his back like four times and then he just turned over right right into position. Um, and yeah, the striking advantage, um, the scrambling ability, it's going to make it tough. And I think Rosas, 
just being the better overall wrestler, I think he's going to win the positions and make it to a decision because he showed a good gas tank. Um, part of it, you know, Pierce slowed down a lot versus Rodriguez. I don't think Rosas will slow down as much. He's showed pretty good cardio. But uh, we'll see, man. This guy, 18 years old. Um, when I first heard this fight announced, I kind of thought it was a gimme for Rosas. And when I did more film, I was like, yeah, forgot how Rodriguez is a little bit better than I thought. So, um, but yeah, we'll see. Rosas by decision. Okay, for the next fight, we have Rob Font versus Adrian Yanez. Picking Yanez, man. I think, I really do believe in this guy. I really do think he's extremely good. Um, and what I think trumps him over uh, Rob Font is his ability to counter strike and also take damage. Um, I like Giannis to find a knockout here uh, in the second round, but uh, you know Rob Font, great jab, great boxing, but you know that Cheeto fight took a lot of damage, took a lot of punches, and Aldo hit him with his boxing, and he was really struggling with that. So, um, what do you think here? Yeah, I think Giannis rolls with the punches really well. Um, I do like that advantage for him. Uh, I just, yeah, like you said, Rob Font just took a ton of damage in his last couple fights. I think Giannis kind of has the touch of death in his hands here. And, uh, yeah, I do like a knockout. I thought Cheeto could have finished Font like multiple times. Just he four total times down. he could have. Yeah, he's not, he knocked him down like three, four times, but didn't... Uh, like jump on him to to pound him out and I just think Yana's will if he gets that opportunity. Right. And um yeah, I th- I just think Font is too box heavy, doesn't really throw many kicks and Yana is rolling with those punches. I think uh he'll be able to to find a knockout here. Well yeah, the the concern I think for a lot of people would be that Randy Costa fight because uh Costa came out and he jabbed Yanez the entire first round, but I think he also expended all of his energy trying to do that to Yanez. Um, another guy, just like how I was talking about with Baja Mundes, I think that Yanez really wants it, man. This guy's tough. He's always stalking people, walking forward in fights, doing a great job of that. Um, and he, dude, he flashes people up with combos. That's probably my favorite thing that I like about him. Like uh, with Randy Costa, you know, go straight to the head, two to the body, straight back to the head. He's going everywhere. And, you know, the counter-striking, I don't think Rob, Rob Font has hardly any counter-striking. It's all, it's, what he does amazingly well is that one-two. It's just one, 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 two, and he'll hit you with that constantly. Um, and, yeah, I think that's just waiting until Giannis picks him apart. Not to mention the damage that Giannis has done to his opponent's faces as well. Like, uh, you see the Tony Kelly fight, like a minute into that fight, Tony Kelly's busted up. And uh, Rob Font, this guy makes a pretty bad weight cut. He looked horrible from what I can remember on, on the scales versus Cheeto. Like had his mouth open, his eyes didn't look right. Um, yeah, uh, he missed weight. I'm was that what sure. it was? He missed weight then? Yeah. Yeah, I I, I don't know. I think that... Uh, I think he looks a bit rough at this weight class. He could definitely go up a weight class. Yeah, and especially he's he's getting up there in age. He's 35 years old now, which um, doesn't tend to um, do well for, for the smaller weight classes. Right. All right. Uh, Adrian Yanez by knockout, round two. Okay, for the next fight, we have Gilbert Burns versus Jorge Masvidal. Uh, we're feeling the burn, going with Gilbert Burns. Um, Jorge, old. I know Burns a little bit older, but it doesn't really show it, in my opinion. I think Jorge, there's just grappling you can't prepare for, and I think that uh, Gilbert also possesses that in the in the division. What do you think? Yep, uh, not sure why Masvidal is taking this fight. I think it's uh, probably going to look a little similar to the coming in fight. I think Burns will just be able to... Uh, to to take him down, control him, maybe find a submission. Um, I think Masvidal is good enough to not get submitted. He's only been submitted once, and that was like a crazy inverted triangle back in 2009. So I think uh, Burns will get the decision here. Um, but yeah, I mean, probably not the 
most entertaining fight. I think you'll just see uh, Burns be able to out grapple him. I, I will say, I do think that there is a concern for this matchup. I think Colby was a harder matchup for Masvidal because um, Colby's a little bit more technical on the feet with like maintaining range and using straight punches. And uh, there's a chance that Gilbert might brawl here with him when it does come to striking, and that could be nerve-wracking because Jorge could benefit from that. But the threat of the takedown and things like that will keep probably Jorge on his t- or on his heels and then open up punches, takedowns for Burns. Um, yeah, I was, I was thinking submission initially because I thought that uh, Masvidal gave up his back a lot versus Jorge, and uh, Colby didn't fully go for those positions. But um, I think Burns also doesn't... He likes top control. He knows top control wins fights. Worked his way on Neil Magny so easily to win that fight. Um, yeah, I just see Burns controlling this with the grappling. Pressure, cardio, not to mention three rounds. I think Gilbert could wrestle for two of the rounds and survive the third if it has to be. So Right. Uh, Who's he call out after this fight? Call out mm, the champion, I guess. Title shot, yeah. Even though, you know, it probably shouldn't warrant it. There's there's too much fuckery at the top of this division. People need to fight each other. Like, I I did used to, you know, shit on Bilal, but at the same time, Bilal is trying to fight people actively, so I'll give him that. Anyway, Burns by decision. Okay, guys, for the main event... We have Alex Pereira versus Israel Adesanya. And guys, before we say, please drop a like in the on the video and uh, subscribe. Leave a comment. Uh, and uh, we'll have our bets video next week on Thursday. But for right now, we are picking Alex Pereira. Um, you know, I know there's probably a lot of Izzy fans, you know, thought he didn't get knocked out in his last fight, whatever, whatever. I think that this is going to be a repeat of history. Um, and I think, you know, there's a lot of reasons for it. We're going with a round four knockout, but Pereira, man, this weight cut that he makes, I think he's just got a crazy size advantage. And I think that, uh, every time he touched Izzy in that fight with his boxing, man, Izzy was dead nervous. And I I think that this is going to be another knockout for Pereira. What do you think? Yeah, I think, uh, Adesanya would be a little tentative, um, especially, you know, in there with his... Um, arch nemesis, I guess you could say, or his kryptonite, I guess, um, who's knocked him out a couple times and speed him all three times. I think uh, Pereira beats him, beats him again, um, and gets another KO here. I think that power is just uh, too good. I think you got to be a good wrestler to to beat Pereira, and I don't really think uh, Adesanya possesses that. Um, I think uh, with the grappling, I think Prayer is going to be getting better and better. I mean, he's only been training MMA for a few years when adesanya has been doing it a little longer than that. Right. So, especially working with Glover and I saw Chuck Liddell, I think uh, his takedown defense should be getting better and hopefully fight off those those takedown uh, attempts from Izzy and be able to keep it on the feet and, and find a knockout. And left hook, right hook, knockout. The one time that uh, Pereira did get stuck on the ground was when he uh, he kicked, and I think Izzy caught his leg, which led to a takedown. So it wasn't even a you know an ordinary takedown in a lot of ways. Um, during the re- during the fight, dude, like the whole time, even, I, I rewatched the fight. You know, I already know what happened. I was holding my breath every time Pereira threw punches. Like it, it's it's like. I, a mythical thing to watch. Um, you know, and Alex's style does have like its downsides. You know, he's very square to his opponents. He's very square because that's where all of his left hook power f- comes from. His, you know, his hips are loaded, ready for the, the turn to one direction. Whereas, you know, that'll open up lead kicks for Izzy. And that's kind of how Izzy got his, uh, kicks going in the last fight. And he got a lot of swelling on Alex's leg, but, uh, I think a bo- but the boxing here will uh, serve more for Alex. Alex, in that last fight, after round one, you can hear the corner advice. He's talking about how Izzy's uh, targeting the leg to open up the headshots, 
And then from that point forward, Izzy really didn't land many strikes after round one after hurting Pereira. And uh, Pereira, you know, he, he's got that left hook. It's crazy. But in the fight, he really didn't land a single left hook up until the finishing sequence. And I think that his jab was, his jab and his right straight got such huge reactions from Izzy every time they landed. Um, in the wrestling, that's where it always stemmed from. It stemmed from Izzy getting touched up a little bit going to the wrestling and I'll tell you what you know the, the the announcers are always talking about how tired Pereira was during that fight from the wrestling I actually think it had a toll on Adesanya you know going for those takedowns and uh not succeeding trying to lift up a bigger guy and uh Pereira like you said Glover one of the most technical guys on the ground you can probably only learn more from that guy uh I think that it's just going to be him pinning up Adesanya on the fence and uh, up until he finds that finish. Any, what else do you think? Yeah, I mean, um, I do think Glover is going to help him out a ton, too, on the ground. Um, I don't. I really don't think he'll be, be stuck down on the ground for, for that long if he is, if Adesanya does get a takedown. But... He- uh, yeah, I mean, um, Pereira getting that knockout, I think that uh, place will erupt. It's a it's a mental toll on Izzy. I mean, you saw Izzy walking out doing, you know, the, with Jared Cannonier, he does the the Undertaker walkout or whatever it was. And then, you know, for his walkout versus Pereira, there was no special antics because I think he was af- afraid of embarrassment. And uh, well, I shouldn't say that too much. He did his fighting a fucking killer. He shouldn't, shouldn't feel bad about any of this, but... Uh, you know, um, Alex, uh, shit, where's I going? Oh yeah. He puts the fear into him. And I think that's where he's going to win. Um, up on, yeah, the f- I think he gets into Izzy's head a little bit. Well, yeah, he's stone faced. He stares the shit out of me, dude, through the TV. Um, up against the fence too. Pereira was going to the body a ton towards the end of the fight versus Adesanya as well. You can see that payoff early. And we always have this phrase here, man, at these, uh, about these fights, rematches rarely play out the same um exactly the same so like in this fight you probably will see i think Pereira win round one i think he's gonna go push him back a little bit you know set the tone for the fight and uh izzy it's hard to say with the uh, craig jones and people that are at his gym who are phenomenal grapplers how he's fully gonna approach this fight but izzy had the chance multiple times to take Pereira's back which he never pulled the trigger on, which could have easily won him the fight. Um, it's hard to say how he's going to totally uh, go for this. Uh, Pereira's chin, too, you know, got hit behind the ear, ear with that one shot, but the weight cut, man, could totally affect that chin. Um, and not to mention Pereira, I, always, I really noticed this about his last fight. You know, Pereira's so used to being such a bigger person than everyone he's fighting that he doesn't really use head striking defense like head movement and uh, a high guard. He mostly just keeps his hands down because he's used to being such a bigger guy that no one can get into that range. And when Izzy breaks that range, it can cause problems for him. So, um, But I think it's only been learning from here. I think it's, uh, I think it's a, a, a jab right hand, and then it's going to feed open, tell if, you know, the big fucking punch. Um you think he goes out, out cold this time, Izzy? Yeah, yes, I do. I mean, it was close last time. I think, you know, there's a lot of those people who, you know, say, um, you know, early, early stoppage stop or it. whatever, but dude, his head was in the territory to be need. Um, you got the hardest hitting guy at the weight class in front of you, probably in the one of the hardest in the UFC or ever. Um, but yeah, if he stops those lead kicks. Gets his boxing going. Pereira wins this fight. Uh, Wrestling-wise, also you have to take into consideration, I think a lot of the wrestling on this fight, last fight, happened on the fence, which will give Pereira an extra extra place to post on versus uh, um, out in the open. He definitely was worse out in the open. Got wrist controlled, shit like that. But yeah, um, so excited to watch this fight again. Uh, looking to bet on Pereira, but waiting for all the Izzy fans to drop their money, like Drake, later in the week on the guy. So, um, yeah. Anything else from you? 
Nada. All right. Uh, Pereira by knockout, round four. Okay, guys, to recap the Vera versus Sanhagen uh, betting, we had another positive night of 0.85 units that makes two weeks in a row. Um, started off with uh, Trevin Giles, which he was in a crazy close fight. You know, I thought he won, but it truly could have gone either way. I definitely did get a little bit lucky there. Um, but I thought he, you know, still landed the better strikes and things like that. Um, second bet, Peterson, or sorry, Peterson, Lucas Alexander outclassed Peterson too easily. Should have put a full unit on it. Who cares? Still won. Um, lost on Cheeto. You know, took that risk. All props to Sanhead, and he looked incredible during that fight. Still love both guys. Um, and, yeah, great performance. Used the wrestling. Couldn't really let Cheeto go uh, the whole time. And then I live bet on uh, Andrea Lee. I thought that Lee was up two rounds. I think a lot of people did, obviously. And I thought she still won the third round. You know, the damage wasn't convincing on the feet either way. And then I think you factor in the wrestling and control time, and I think it swings to Lee. And, uh, you know, lost that bet, but uh, I'm not going to hang my head on it. I think I still made the right read, and most people would agree with that. And uh, anyway, moving down. Uh, Venetia Salvador and Victor Aldo I knew this was going to be a higher-paced fight, and uh, they just really couldn't connect with each other's chins too well. That's the only downside, I think, from their uh, fighting styles as they weren't as coordinated to be able to find a finish. Uh, but still a war, nonetheless. Great fight. Um, Holly Holm versus Yana Santos. Uh, over two and a half was scary because Yana was on the verge of being finished at the end of the second round. But uh, the Manel Cop fight fell off, and again, just left with a bet on a, a two favorable odds number. And then to polish it off, Nate Landwehr, Austin Lingo, um, and uh, had the over one and a half with the uh, main event going over two and a half. And um, they hit pretty easily, although the Landwehr fight obviously coming very close to a, a stoppage. Uh, around that time marker, but we got it. Not to mention, um, I tailed Addicted to Combat, if you guys watch his channel at all. You know, he brought up the Landware sub thing, and I I uh, really like Landware by sub. I placed a small bet on um, Landware sub round two. It actually made five units off of it from tailing him, so shout out to him for uh, that little bit of free money there. Um, but yeah, overall, Great card for us still. Um, could have done better. Obviously, the Lee decision will flip the flip the units a little bit, but uh, oh well. And uh, yeah, stay tuned, guys. Thursday should have a bets video next week. I know that's a while away, but uh, yeah. Uh, Pereira by knockout. Peace. No, I know. It doesn't matter from the trenches. I'm built like this. Don't doubt to me, I couldn't do it.